there's something so great about living in a neighborhood. You know all the shops and shopkeepers, and you really feel like you belong to a community. Hey, how you doing? All right. Making some juice for breakfast yes. in the morning. Huh? Are these good for juicing? Yes. Yes. But if you want a grapefruit, it's better than yours. Hey. ¿Cómo está, ¿Qué tal, amigos? Bien, gracias. And in a neighborhood, you can get to know people who are different from you. They may speak other languages or celebrate holidays you've never even heard of. So it's a great opportunity to make new friends. Here's a story about two people who met because they were neighbors and ended up being the best of friends. It's called Mrs. Katz and Tush. Mrs. Katz and Tush by Patricia Polacco. Read by Rachel Barzik. And Rick English. Every day, Larnell and his mother stopped in to see Mrs. Katz. Since my husband died, I am so alone. That's Myron, said Mrs. Katz, as they looked at their photo album. We had such a life, such a life. Her voice broke. We had no children, and I'll be alone for Hanukkah and Passover. The next day, Lanel stopped in to see her himself. I've been thinking. A cat had some kittens in the basement of our building. Nobody wants this one because she's so ugly. Oh, scrawny little boobaloo. Oh, I don't know. Then Mrs. Cat saw Lanelle's face. I'll, I'll take her, but only if you'll help me with her. Lanelle promised. A good Yiddish name I'll give her, said Mrs. Cat. She has no tail, and all you see is her tush. Oh, we'll call her tush. Little tush grew healthy and strong. Mrs. Katz cooked for her and knitted toys for her. Such a person, she'd say as she watched tush play. Mrs. Katz was in love. Lanel visited every day. And there was always a fresh-baked kugel and a tall glass of milk waiting for him. Mrs. Katz talked about the way times used to be. I came here from Poland. I didn't speak one word of English. Myron and I used to vacation in the Catskills. A, a borscht resort, a place for Jews to stay. You mean Jews couldn't stay anywhere they wanted? Grandma couldn't stay places either. Larnell, your people and mine are alike. Troubles we've seen, happiness too, and great strengths we've had. One afternoon, Mrs. Cat said, since you're almost family to me, Larnell, I want you should come with me to say Kaddish for my Myron. I know you're not Jewish, but Myron would have liked you. You're such a person, Lanel. At the cemetery, she read from her book. Then she asked Lanel to put a small rock on Mr. Katz's headstone. We do this to remember. When they got home, Tush wasn't there. I, I forgot to shut the window. Oh, poor Bubala, she, she has never been outside before. We'll find her. Mrs. Katz and Lanel left notes on doors, telephone poles, and fences. They asked everyone who lived nearby. But no one has seen little Tush. The next morning, a loud knock woke up Mrs. Katz. It was Lanel's father and two neighbors. Is this yours, they asked. 
Mrs. Katz took Tush in her arms. My, my boobily, my little Katzily. <coughs> One day, Mrs. Katz seemed very lonely and sad. And she said, I miss Myron. Passover this year will be just me. Could I have Passover dinner with you? Oh, I, I thought you'll never ask, she exclaimed. Such a Seder I'll prepare for you. And when they sat down to the Seder together, Mrs. Katz lit candles, read from her book, and said prayers. They drank red wine and water. They ate bitter herbs, gefilte fish, and spicy chopped apples with potato pancakes and matzo. The next day, Mrs. Katz yelled out her window to Lanel. Come, come quickly already. Something wonderful happened. Lanel and his mom and dad rushed to the door. Mazel tov, Tush, four babies. Now you're a mommy and, and I'm a baba, a grandma. <coughs> As the years passed, Mrs. Katz, Tush, and her descendants became part of Lanel's family. There were graduations, weddings, new babies, and, and finally, a Kaddish. Lanel stood in front of her headstone. He read from her book. He placed a small rock on top of her headstone. Then Lanel, his wife, and their children read the inscription together. Mrs. Katz, our Bobby. Such a person. <laughs> A Mrs. Katz in my life, too. This is Sherry, and she's been like a grandmother to me, and I love her. And today, we're gonna make some traditional Jewish delicacies, and we're gonna start with challah. Challah. That's how you challah say it? Challah means dough. Challah means dough. Right. Let's make some challah. Now, challah's bread, right, Sherry? We're gonna turn it into bread. Okay. We're gonna turn the dough into bread. So we make challah on, on special occasions? On special occasions, for the Sabbath, mm -hmm. for Shabbat, for Yom Kippur. For Rosh Hashanah. Where do we start? You can start with seven cups of flour. Seven cups of flour. Oh, so we're going to make dough. We're, we're going to make, make dough the first. dough. Right. You, you want bread, you have to make dough. All right, seven cups of flour, huh? One. One. Two. Five. And two. And no shells. Right. Good Out. man. Okay, all right. Now we need four tablespoons of oil. Okay. There you go. All right. Now, Sherry, I mean, this is all a lot of fun and everything, but we could just go down to the bakery and buy a loaf of challah, couldn't we? I mean, why do we make challah? We could go down to the bakery and buy it, uh -huh. but enjoying the smells and the uh, warmth, and it's part of tradition. Right. People and have made challah for centuries, this, huh? Yes, and we're passing this on from generation to generation to generation. Right. And now we can put the yeast mixture into the into flour a, mixture. Okay. And, and now we're going to add two, about two cups of warm water. So we're going to mush all Ooh, this up. Ooh, yes. Now it's going to turn into a dough. I love cooking with my hand. Can I get in here with sure, you? Sure, come help on. You here? It's getting all glumpy now. Right. Now, Sherry, tell me, what is the, the strong connection between Jewish peoples and food? You always hear about Jewish mothers, and they tell you, eat, you got to eat something. Right. But why is that? Well, I think it was that food was always a very important part of family mm -hmm, and tradition. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And it was time for families to be together mm -hmm, and to share mm -hmm. uh, thoughts, to share foods. It was a warm time mm -hmm. when people really share their lives. It's like that in my culture, too, in the African-American yes. culture. Yeah, we're always sitting around the kitchen. The kitchen is the center of the house. It's where everybody hangs out. 
It's where all the food is and, and the fun and the laughs. Right. There, now it's together. Is that good? Sure. Looking good there? Sure. Okay.